probably won because of a couple lucky breaks early on, namely the Raven, probably. Well, don't worry. This game features a Raven in the open hand, so... <laughs> what? Where? I don't see it. Um, it's it's there in the drawbirds. On oh, the it is in the drawbirds. Why? Did I purchase? No, I I drew the raven last time. All right, so wonder that was a casual helpful Nathan, right? That's what we're going for. Yeah, uh, I guess sure. Okay, that's fine. I don't think I'm gonna get first crack at that raven, anyways. And I would advise whoever goes first, probably the correct play is to take the raven, <laughs> unless it's just a no raven game. I don't know, did you guys think the Raven really was the game breaker last time or it, it definitely helps a lot. <laughs> I don't I don't know if it broke that game or not. I I will tell you my highest points I've ever gotten in a game was 141 and mm. that was with a Raven. So <laughs> it it's definitely the strongest card. <laughs> Actually, the one I didn't see at all was um, the Kill Deer of Franklin's Goal, which gives you one egg for two draw cards. Mm. So the really good play is, is when you have both the Raven and like one of those cards, because then you never need to activate anything other than the Grasslands. <laughs> so just... Carl, are you going to take the Raven or are you going to say everyone no Raven round? We're, we're both in. Are, are you choosing cards, Carl? I, I am choosing cards. Okay. Uh, trying I... to decide which is... Actually, I, I don't have an option to choose cards. Where are my cards? Or it's because I'm, I am going for first. I was yeah. for Wander you. gets to go first, and Wander did not have the Raven last time while Shell did, so it doesn't... It only seems fair for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to decide between <laughs> two birds. Do I want to go for the Bar Barrow's Golden Eye again for just egg, or um, do I want to try for something different? If, if you do want to grab the Raven... You'll need another bird out that the raven can eat eggs off of. So if you get the golden eye, that's two six food total for the two of them. It'll be a little bit slow getting the raven going. Okay. So you still take the golden eye, but you might want to pick a one food bird really um, as well. Okay. It's still good. I mean, the golden eye is good, but it won't. It also won't be able to lay on the raven. So you'll even need a third bard. To get the whole thing running. Ooh. <laughs> yes, of course, okay. if you have a kill common... deer or a Franklin's gull, then <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm in Raven. I mean, yeah. Oh, okay. I see. I'm waiting for you guys to get your cards. Yeah, it, this this is the sort of thing I wish it could do all at once because it's not interacting. Like theoretically, yeah. we all could be doing this, and I think even I think even when you play normally, this probably is how it would operate. Um, but I suspect the logic of the game was slightly more annoying to code up that way. Huh, interesting. The uh, these most of the birds that I have drawn are completely new. Yeah, there's a lot of birds in this game. <laughs> I think that's part of what gives it the variety is that they, they gave you a lot of choices there. I think it's they're all one-offs. I don't think there are multiples of any bird in the deck as well. I think it's just 190 unique birds. <laughs> yes, um, Wander? I was just thinking about how... Um... I'm I'm listening to the soundtrack for this game and it is absolutely lovely. I was kind of tempted yeah. just for a bit to mute it and then just turn on metal. <laughs> just like the most metal high octane <laughs> music. I mean, you are going for the raven, which I think implies is eating the eggs of the other birds. So that feels pretty metal to me, if anything. Okay, and then I have to choose the special card. Platforms yeah. and other things. <laughs> Actually, what, terms what birds do I already... Can I check my deck to see what birds I had drawn? Yeah, you can just switch back to it. It gives you two tabs. You can even switch the goal card before you pick birds. Like, you don't have to look at it in this order. Yeah, yeah I, I, guess... I don't know. I don't know what birds I have. Um, Where would they be? 
they're just there's like a two tabs it's it's close to the like oh there, there we go there we go yeah so now i can see what birds i have hmm either of these would work i suppose it depends on which one i think i'll get more of maybe this one yeah i mean if both work it works well if if they're nest based goals and you have some birds that fit that early that's good mm -hmm. i'd say the omnivore one is almost always incredible <laughs> I, I um, had i had the omnivore one last time but i think i only had three birds that ever really accommodated that obviously the raven had two omnivore slots i don't know if that meant that it counted for double or if it was just because it was an omnivore it counted as one towards that goal probably uh it only counts as it's per bird so mm -hmm. Otherwise, this whooping crane that I'm looking at, which costs three omnivore, would be just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go with that one. <laughs> what are yes. you laughing at? I uh, just, I turned on some metal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> metal music? What? Yeah. Just with this utterly... pleasant meadow with the birds and the... <laughs> well, it looks pleasant to us, but if you were a bird, that's how it would feel. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine being, like, a small bird where there's just these enormous birds that might, like, fly out of the sky and eat you at any moment? Like, mm -hmm. humans are big enough that birds usually weren't going to, like, kill us instantaneously like that, but... That's your life as a violet green swallow, you know? Okay. I'm going to gain food, but what do I want to gain? Flying must also be utterly terrifying. Ah, I suppose I have no choice. Now, if I have one of those die that's a double, it can count for either, right? Pretty good. How much do I have of each of those things? Uh, maybe I do want another? Mm. I don't know. Oh, why would I do that? going to be a little mean. Maybe I should have chosen a different one. No one summoned a bird yet, right? <laughs> well, Wander grabbed a raven, and I grabbed the eastern kingbird, so if you didn't put a bird, then... Mm -hmm. I do like that we're using Magic the Gathering parlance for this. Summon. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, yes, I don't have enough like... berry mana for this bird. <laughs> I summon the swan, the most powerful bird in the game. <laughs> All right. What oh, can gosh. I, what can I grab? Or actually, wait a minute. Eh. Back or what back? Maybe I didn't want to do that. Now, if I summon more birds in forest, does that mean I get more resources later on? Oh, only when I get to the third slot. Um, I mean... Like, each bird always increases the number of resources per activate. But, like, the even numbers tend to be better than the odd numbers. Because I'm the... seeing for the second slot, it's, it looks like the back of a card to yep. so resource. You can, you can get two food if you pay it. You can get one food and then get an additional food if you pay a card. But once you have two birds, that's when you get the third one, right? It's the one mm. to the right of where you've got the birds played. This was counterintuitive to me at first. I, at first, I thought you needed to have three birds to get the two, but it's only two. Ah, interesting. Yeah, maybe I do want another resource while it's here, especially. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> the bird song music is still going on in the background so it's just like da 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 tweet 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 da 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 tweet 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 
<laughs> it's the dumbest shit. I love it. It's what we need. You know, it's not that we need to have the two overlaid. We need a remix of the Wingspan soundtrack, specifically from the bird perspective, where their life is just <laughs> hardcore threat of death all the time. Uh... Look like, I mean, like, people are afraid of flying in planes, and that's like a pretty tame experience. Like, it gets up in the air, gets as far away from the ground as possible, and it interacts with as little as possible. I was I was like walking a few weeks ago and I startled the bird and I kicked the bird as it like went by like I didn't <laughs> I didn't try to but like the bird intersected with my foot as it was going forward and that bird just kept flying like I felt it like against my foot and it completely changed directories but it recovered midair and just got out of there. <laughs> now, how do I choose to reroll? The bird feeder? Yeah. Oh, there should um, be a little you icon. You have to pick the fish first. You have to pick the fish before you can re-roll, and that looks like that's your only food you can yeah. get. So Yeah, so you have oh, to really? pick one or the other. Then somebody else can re-roll. Yeah, so it's not not great. If you oh. want something that's not currently in the bird feeder, if you have anything else you could justify doing, you might want to do it. <laughs> I mean, I could summon a bird, but it would use up resources that I want to keep. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough decision. Uh, you know, I... Part of the reason I like this game so much is that there's a lot of things that feel like really hard to figure out what the optimal strategy for it is. Um, it took a lot of like thinking to, to get there and I'm not sure that I always do it. <laughs> yeah, because I really don't want to sacrifice one of the resources that I have. Uh, this is... I think, Why did you guys say I had to choose the fish, though, as opposed to one of the grains? Uh, if you want to re-roll, you have to pick the fish. You really? You can only like, re-roll it when if all they're of the, the same. birds, all of the symbols are the same food. Oh. So if you pick the fish, there would only be grain left in the bird feeder. You can re-roll it. That's interesting. Unfortunately, I don't need fish at the moment. Hmm. So it's either summon a bird... I don't have the requisite resources for and waste two additional resources that I, or one additional resource that I don't want to, or choose a resource I don't need and it re-rolls, but then that means the next round I could potentially do something? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it's hard decisions. I, I also find I try not to agonize over them too much just because it's so hard to figure out what the correct one is. I. I think it's worth thinking about, but yeah, you know, I, I feel like I'll you learn just... the game better if it goes. Yeah. I have gained food. I have drawn birds. I have listened to battle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, hmm. Has anyone hmm. summoned birds yet? Oh, you have I your have raven. An, I have an eastern kingbird out. Yeah, I've got and two birds he's out. He's a green heron. He has materialized his strategy. I'm trying to decide, is that Rosiate Spoonbill immediately worth it? I mean, do you have other birds you want to play? No, I don't have anything. I would say oh, there, there the is Spoonbill's spoon pretty good then. I mean, where yeah, are you? No, it's good. Yeah, I think I think the real trick when you have the raven down is you want to get that wetland and grassland up. Yeah. And you know, it'd be good if they were like engines for those two things, but I, I the spoonbill is often worth 9 points, I think is my expectation for it. So, yeah. But I, I think with the caveat that the earlier you get that bonus card, the more you can account for it in your strategy too. So, yeah. I was but mostly just thinking, it's like, well, it. it doesn't really factor into any of my strategies, but what I do need is just to draw more cards. Yeah, you do want that wetland. So, yeah, I mean, I think I'd consider it. I, the other one, though, is that Lincoln Sparrow. The ability to move between habitats right now would let you be able to 
activate as though you had two birds in both your wetland and the grassland bumping them back and forth. It's a lot easier to plan two zones rather than just one, so. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, this is a bit more manageable. Ooh, I got the bug. Mm hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> of the. I need to put a forest card down. Yeah. No, it's just funny because I was looking at. I needed, like, a bug for something, and I was thinking, like, I could draw it, but I'm hoping someone will play a forest bird, right? <laughs> someone. Anyone. Oh, Northern Cardinal. That's an excellent card. That was the one I was thinking about playing, and, uh... But yeah, the wind activated, say... is that only when there's an egg laid on it? No. Oh, well... When, whenever, when you, it... whenever you activate the forest, you get the Northern Cardinals uh, berry. Oh, I see. So it's, it's kind of cool, because it basically doubles your food output early just from that one card. <laughs> How, Pretty strong. So when I do the the next food thing, will those two die get re-rolled? Or will all the die get re-rolled? Uh, yeah, so if you activated the forest right now, you'd have the option of taking one of the grains, or you could re-roll it immediately and then take whatever gets re-rolled. Okay, reset the bird feeder. That's what it is? Yeah. Okay. It's weird. Now that I'm listening to this metal music, there's just certain parts of it that sound kind of like bird music as well. So I've got like a cyber bird just tweeting in the background. <laughs> okay, I got a berry. It's like, the, whenever you're listening to music, it's kind of that like, pachoo, laser noise. But mm -hmm. in, in this specific situations a little bit more. I want everyone to appreciate that there's four bugs in the bird feeder. <laughs> yep. Yep. And now there are not. <laughs> Did you have the bird that is claim Takes, all? Claim all bugs. <laughs> what? Enjoy Where? Bug. Wow. That's, that's got to be one of the best Gain all claims that are in I've the bird ever feeder. done. Uh, I see. Oh, but now there's a, a huge mix. At least yeah. grains, bugs, and then the rat. The rat. Or the mouse. Whichever one it is. <laughs> a rodent. I have slowly been getting my girlfriend warmed up to the idea of owning a pet rat. Oh, are they allowed in your apartment complex? No, it would be like post this apartment complex, probably. There's a no pet policy, and I feel like probably we could break it for a fish, but I feel like a rat's something people might feel pretty strongly about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that some places don't allow, say, hamsters because they have the unfortunate uh, proclivity to escape and then burrow into the walls oh. and like create yeah. nests and stuff in places. So, I guess uh, they are a lot like rats, aren't they? <laughs> mm hmm Yep. The hamsters are just sad, unfortunate creatures. Because... <laughs> what? <laughs> they're, they're, they only live about two years, and if you ever have more than one of them, they're apt to just kill each other in cold blood. Oh, like rats, which are just happy to be friends. You know, realistically, um, my understanding is that is that mice will do the same thing. Oh yeah. I mean, mice also live an incredibly short life as well. But guinea pigs, at the very least, they look they can live up to six to eight years, depending. Oh, okay. I love guinea pigs. They make the most adorable cooing noises. <laughs> well, well, it's more like the little squeaking, like the wink, 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 wink. Wander, do you, what was our guinea pig name that we had in New Mexico? Martin. Oh, in New Mexico. No, no, no. Sorry, our was rat was forget. Martin. I was going to forget our rat's name. Martin Come was now. the rat. <laughs> what was the guinea pig, though? Uh, well, you guys honest... got the guinea pig from whoever owned the place before, right? Or a friend? Yeah. 
It was something the guinea like pig that. was broadly feral and just lived in a greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, it was. That was a nasty little sucker. Um, I don't remember. Guinea pigs can be socialized, right? Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Very much okay. so. My my guinea pigs, I unfortunately my mom became allergic to them, and I had mm. to put them up for adoption after a year. But they would sit in your lap and. The only the reason why that guinea pig and... was so bad oh. was just because the owners never did anything with it. It was just a showpiece. I see. Huh. But yeah, my guinea pigs, they my one guinea pig would lick you whenever you put your finger in front of his mouth and he was just so cute. Uh, and yeah, we actually would do something with them called the guinea pig opera where because we had two of them and one of them was higher pitched than the other one, if you just lightly rubbed their backs, they'd make a little <laughs> wee, 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 noise. Wee, wee, oh, wee, that's wee. so fun. So I, okay. I'd essentially have a two-note guinea pig instrument, I suppose. <laughs> so I, guess and, I, I guess I could accept guinea pigs as a pet replacement for a rat, then. Yeah, they... The, the, the living they, longer seems like a big one, actually. <laughs> The thing about guinea pigs, too, is um, they are social, so you, you're always supposed to have more than one. Mm. But my family built uh, what we called the pig pen for them. And so it's a larger enclosure than a cage. They're better with larger ones. But, you know, you put down the bedding and you have all these little toys for them and such. And they'll just run around and have a fun time. Uh, let's see. So... The goal for this round is count the total number of birds with a specific nest type that have at least one egg. Ah, yeah. so yeah. I, I only have I haven't seen any bull eggs one. go by. <laughs> I okay. guess I win this round. Now, do I want this creature in the wetlands or do I want them in the... What is it? Hmm. Uh, it's a golden eagle. Golden eagle. It can go in the wetlands or in the... Um, the prairies. Yeah. At this point in the game, both are pretty good. I think I'll go prairie for now. Let's see. Yeah, I think my only hesitation to getting a rat again would just be the very, very short lifespan. Yeah. Cancer being another thing too. Right, it was it was tough. The guinea pigs would rank. I I doubt I would do it, but there's a uh, a rodent called a degu that is super like lovey. Um to point to the point where you actually have to get two of them or interact oh. with them constantly. Otherwise, they can and will die of heartbreak, which is, like, really oh. sad, but, like... But also weirdly adorable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh! Whenever a, uh... A new cycle goes, it replaces... This is why it's so good to be first, right? Yeah. You get first, you get first pick at those. Oh, there's new birds? Yeah. A mallard duck. Yeah, the, Ruby the Ballard is definitely a really strong early play, so it might still be worth considering. Here, the, the Ruby Crown Kinglet, just because it's earlier in the game to build up a food engine. Wander doesn't need it, but like, oh, you know. Oh, it's my turn. It is. That's interesting. But the oh, yellow yeah. build Cuckoo, though, especially when Wander already has a Rave Grassland. Yeah, that would tempting. give you a... <laughs> yeah, that would give you a, ni a nice opportunity to feed off of my strat. The cuckoos, yeah, they're the ones that will often lay their eggs in another bird's nest, and their yep. their offspring are so large, they Shall tend to push play. all the other ones out. Hey, okay, well, I'm debating whether or not I want to get more resources or... I, I just want to make sure bird. that you were taking your, your round before you get distracted talking. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, given we spend a third of the game playing, I, I don't mean to distract you when it's not my turn, but I'm definitely going to try to avoid chatting too much when it is mine. Yep. Yeah, the, and that's why the cuckoo has that power. Um, although I like reading into, like, why specifically the mallard duck draws you cards. 
Um, what does it mean? <laughs> I mean, where there's one mouth Why is duck, it there's worth always nothing? another. Why is it Why worth is that, nothing? Yeah, it is worth nothing. It is a useful bird, but it is worth is nothing. Non-existent. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going Mallard this game. Am I going Mallard? Do I really want this? Draw so many cards, you cannot draw any more cards. <laughs> It, it's a strategy that definitely backfires. That's pretty good. Oh, wow. You took two cards? Yeah. I got... He's... Actually, I could take three cards even, because I, I I have uh, two birds in the wetlands, so I can draw two, but I have one that draws and tucks. Wait, the Baird Sparrow lay one egg on any bird? It's a strong card. It's a strong yeah. card for Wander, actually. Something yeah. you really want to get. It is... I is, I do not is, know what it, kind of strategy I have. This is kind of it is sad. It's extremely tempting. The only problem is, as it currently stands, I'm still very much in the... I'm going to have more eggs than I'm consuming resource-wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. how do you get rid of eggs otherwise? Oh, maybe f to sacrifice for resources or yeah, other things. I, I would say I have very rarely ran out of available egg slots early in a game. So getting things to give you extra eggs when you have a raven that's eating them as you lay eggs. Yeah. You know, I, I'd say it's it's hard to go wrong with something that lays extra eggs. But at the same time, maybe you have some other bird you'd rather play. That's fine, too. Oh, right. You do just get points for having maxed out birds, right? Um, I mean, each bird is worth points, right? Yeah. But there's no, there's no is additional there no, like, thing. Oh, there's no additional thing for just having shit tons of eggs sitting around? Oh, the, the eggs are worth uh, one point each. Just Okay. But I, I thought you were asking if, like, maxing out the eggs on a bird was bonus points somehow. It's like, well, no, only for the eggs. No, apart from but... just having them. Yeah. Yeah, no, you want lots of eggs, and that's that's why it's good to have. Because your last four rounds for me is often just laying eggs a bunch of times. <laughs> right, that's why they're so strong, because, like, in terms of resources, food and cards do you nothing at the end of the game, except for unless you have that one bonus card. Um, actually, this particular round is just about playing lots of birds, though, so... as you consider your strategy. Yeah, which is a problem when you don't have any birds. <laughs> oh, look at the gross bell. I think I've seen some of those. They're cute. Hmm. Maybe I don't want this duck. I don't know if I've ever played a gross bell, actually. That might be one of them in the archive that I don't have. There's an achievement for playing all the birds once, and I have not yet gotten that one. The only other one I'm missing is play three crows or ravens in the same zone, which you basically never want to do <laughs> by the time Did you, you get have, the second one. You have five birds out already? Uh, yeah. Dang. Oh, they're cheapens. I get it. They're cheap. Also, that northern flicker that got me four bugs. <laughs> yeah, that probably helps. That helped a lot. <laughs> I even traded food for an egg at one point. <laughs> so for the American Robin, you don't get extra points for having those cards behind the American Robin. It just lets you cycle your hand into more useful things. You get extra points for it. Oh. It's kind of incredible. That's real good. I'll attack that guy. Looks very pleasant. Go for that. Yeah, so the um 
The ones that cycle cards are great because oftentimes you end up with some kind of dud cards and you can turn them into better birds, but then it's also a guaranteed point every round. So they're kind of a strict upgrade over the predator birds. A pretty strong upgrade actually, but they tend to have low point counts for the total number, whereas the predator birds can get up to eight for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> predator birds. Something feels weird about saying that. Oh, I suppose I could. Now, when you have a card that says, play another bird into the same habitat, pay its normal cost, does that mean I have to have the extra resources for it? Yep, you need the food and the eggs for it. So make sure you got those before you play the first one. Although it does let you undo that first one as long as you don't. Um, hit skip okay. on that last point. How many extra eggs will I need then? Huh. I mean, I suppose I can take that. Get more stuff from the supply. I wonder how many eggs I'll need, though. Is it one egg per new summon? Uh, it depends summon. on the cost of the slot. I still love that we're uh, <laughs> it's using Magic birds. Gathering. Part. Well, I mean, considering we are we are conjuring birds using the eggs of other birds, it's like true. that's. I think it's it's very Yu-Gi-Oh, actually, right? Yes, it's like a tribute monster business. Yeah. Except you're not you're not tributing a creature to draw out new creatures, though. You're just tributing the children of your creatures. Yeah. <laughs> I got out the cuckoo. I could have optimized for the end of round goal, but I just wanted those eggs from that cuckoo. So what does it mean, dice outside bird feeder? So the bird feeder currently has zero dice outside bird feeder, but if there was only one die in the bird feeder, then okay. it would be four dice you'd be rolling on that one. Mm -hmm. So it, this one, I, I've always been mixed on it because it, it feels like it could be good if you could keep the bird feeder low. Yeah. But it's hard to do that. So it, it often I only get like one to two points off those guys throughout the game. But if you were playing two player and you knew your opponent had a raven and didn't need to use the bird feeder, and if for some reason you were done drawing food, you could end up with a situation where you put it down to one food in the bird feeder and then it, I guess, would be rolling four dice, would have a decent chance each turn. But it's like never better than the like other cards. <laughs> but you didn't just play that one, did you? You're just looking at it. Oh, oh, paying what? dividends already. Just looking at the that. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh. My problem is, my normal solo commentary for games like this is to talk about exactly what I'm going to do, but I can't mm -hmm. do that. <laughs> it's a little off-setting. Yeah. Or uh, off-putting. I don't know. I guess I guess there are certain things that can be really um, problematic to let out, but... This is a game, though, where it doesn't really seem like there's much to be done one way or another. Your, your opponents uh, have whatever cards they have. It's not like you can necessarily oh. prevent them from achieving their goals. I don't it, have sufficient. So the, the places where you can is if, if Wander said, oh, I have this like great horned owl in my hand and I'm just looking for like a rat so that I can play it. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm picking food. And I just took the rat just to like counter that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be problematic. Yeah. The other one is when you see something in the open pile and you're like, oh, I really need that burrowing owl with its star nest to fit my particular goal. Someone might take it for that reason. I think the main trick is that oftentimes people have to kind of hurt themselves to do that to you. And in a two-player game, that's like totally going to be a problem. <laughs> but in a three-player game, hurting yourself to hurt one other player is often a bad strategy. Um, but this comes up a lot because my, when my girlfriend and I play this, will hot seat it so we see each other's hands. 
Ah. Uh, <laughs> so, so you can't exactly point, hide. At one point, she was like, I noticed she was like counter picking food on me intentionally, and I was like, no, that's not fair. <laughs> that's rude. So, you know, we, we decided, we made an agreement that we try to avoid that. Uh, but I think previously her understanding was that it was just an open information game and that was just the way to play it when we were hot seating, which, you know, that's a way to keep it honest too. Now, Nathan, I gotta ask, did you did you grab the mallard earlier? Yeah, I did, and, you, and then I can. tucked it. <laughs> you I tucked, tucked it like a monster. I tucked I, the I was going to say, like, if you want to if you wanted to go all in, the Northern Shoveler does the same thing. <laughs> I know, but then but I like, tucked it like a monster. Much more aggressively. Hear me out, though. I like, I had other birds that I needed to keep that were good, so I kept them instead. I don't know. Maybe this. I picked up a chimney swift, um, which is three points, two food, star nest. It's all right. Um, main reason I picked it though is because it only eats bugs, and I have a a goal that gives me bugs for it. So it's worth five points instead of three as a result of that. Hmm, mm -hmm. But then I haven't, yeah, I'm gonna have an even number of birds in all of my zones. So then having the chimney swift at the end of that is just not gonna help so much. Uh. I suppose once I have the two, cause I have all these tuck bird powers I don't feel like I'm hurting for card, uh, you know, but then I'm going to run out of cards and I'm going to like want to tuck them and probably the mallard still is a good play. Tucked it like a monster. My, my head cannon is this violet green swallow is just eating all of the birds that I tuck with it. <laughs> it's just huge. Little swallow just ate that duck. Oh, I'm I'm a little confused. I'm trying to summon the Ruby Crown Kinglet with the Red Grow spell. I think I have enough resources for it, but I don't want to pay in a second. I I don't know how I'm going to do this because I need that and this. Now here's the question: Can you run out of cards in the deck, or does it just keep generating more? I certainly have never ran out of them. Okay. And I, th um, I mean, this is tricky because I think there are 190 cards. Okay. And I think it keeps reshuffling everything immediately after they're like I discarded okay. or. I'm a little confused with how this food system is going right now. I want to pay in a couple of fruit instead of a, a grain. Yep. But it's not letting me fulfill it. So, yeah, I mean, I, if, if you click all the berries, it'll fill them half at a time into the grain. I just don't see. Do you want me to come take a look? Yeah, it's not working. Okay, I'll be right back. Um, so, is it currently auto generating putting in a grain and you want to change it, it to be berries instead? Yeah. Um, and I see it's like a two to one. What are you trying to do? I want to pay, I don't want to pay a grain. Okay. I want to pay a berry instead. Are you trying to keep the grain so you can activate it with your black bellied whistling duck? Uh, no, with the red grow spill, cause I'm gonna need to pay its normal cost. I mean, I, I will point out that it doesn't matter you which you pay for the grain like or, or is it an omnivore or does it require a grain? No, no, no. So I'm trying to use the Ruby Crowned Kinglet ability to play another bird into the same habitat and pay its normal cost. Its normal cost, yeah. Yeah. So, so if, she's if got both require grain, berries, it doesn't matter. One grain. She's trying to avoid spending the one grain to spend more berries. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you you should be able to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But she I said was just that asking. I should be able to do it, but it's um, not working. Yeah. So if. If you, I'm seeing the two for one, but and I can keep just chugging extra we're, we're, berries we keep in there. Chucking berries in one after the other, and I still can't choose. Yeah, I, I think you're out of luck here. I'm Is sorry. it really? broken? Does maybe it... they just didn't implement it, or no, maybe no, no, it's this, not actually this, okay in the rules and just you know. This totally like should work. Version. This totally should work. I've yes. never found this bug. 
Um, so you chug berries in, and do you see the food filling when you do it? Okay, so it's requiring, to bring out the Ruby Crown Kinglet, uh -huh. it requires a berry, a bug, and a wheat. Okay, I so that should have... be five berries to pay for that entirely in berries. Right, but I have a grub that I want to use. So okay. I can use the grub and I can use the berry. All I want to do is pay two more berries for a wheat. Yeah, but, but it's I not letting her do that. When I click I on think two it's... more berries, it doesn't let me fill I, in the wheat. I think it's because huh. you can't you can't replace a resource that you actually have a supply of. Oh, weird. Uh, huh. It's okay. Yeah. So what's what's the reason you want to keep the grain anyways? So that I can use one of my grains for the red gross cross bill when I summon it using the um, but ability from the Ruby Crown Kinglet. There is parity on this, right? Because like you're just gonna have to pay two food now or two food later for that. So it, I don't think it matters which operation order you choose on that. I, I don't think it changes it, right? Because um, like you just so keep I the two berries for later and then pay that instead of the grain later. I, I suppose I could try that. So I'll just I'll I'll see if I it works this time around. So pay. Yeah, it would it would surprise me that this bug exists because this feels like a common occurrence. But then again, I haven't noticed it before, so I don't know what's going on. Now the weird thing is, if I put everything in, it doesn't allow me to pay it off. What's going on yeah, here? Yeah, I mean I. I would say it doesn't strike me that it matters in your case here, so I wouldn't worry about it, but it, it should matter for other things, so I am surprised that they have this. Okay, so I'm going to pay the egg. Okay, oh, now it's giving me the proper action. Okay, I got it. That's confusing. I suppose it's because it did want me to just use what I already had. Yeah, I just haven't seen that air. Sorry about all that. No, I'm just surprised. <laughs> there are certain points where the game UI is a little bit confusing, but I haven't found an actual bug on it like that, so. Let's see. No, oh, still your turn. Uh, it just switched over to me. I'm just going through that. Okay, I'm done. I had to get out my birds. I don't know. I'm not sure Nathan is being so casual this game. <laughs> oh. I've just, I think I've gotten oh. bad luck. That does happen. I, yeah. I have had some good luck so far this game, and I think that's just kind of paying for itself. Because I don't even really know what synergies my current cards have, and it's just... Ugh. Yeah. It I took mean, such a long time to build up the resources, whereas that other round when I had the Raven, it was easy to. I would say you've got... I mean, yeah, certainly feeling the I don't have a Raven is like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ravens help a lot. Um... I mean, Certainly my Northern Cardinal can create berries at the very least, but... Yeah, you've got a great forest at the moment, and I think you've just got to leverage that to play lots of birds. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you've got a good start for your grassland and your wetland to use up food, so that helps with the forest, actually. So it's a pretty good start there. So now we're on to the water bit, aren't we? Ooh, a California condor. Oh, it's eggs in water, not water Bubble birds. Link. And a blue winged warbler. Why is the condor worth so little? Poor thing. Um, so the scavenger birds, there's like vultures and condors, are worth, um, little points because they don't cost food. Oh, you're right. It does have a little no food symbol. Yeah. 
So those are those are incredibly strong early plays, actually. At this point, I'd say it's kind of too late. The Condor like might be okay because it gives the bonus card, but you'd only want to play it if you had nothing had better trouble to do. with food. Um, <laughs> nothing better to do. I feel like very rarely do I have nothing better to do in I Wingspan. My last round, I just picked what, oh, like the last game we did, I picked one of those up and just slapped it down because I had nothing better to do and <laughs> better resources to spend. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can see it. I just usually think that, like, Wingspan, it feels like you're very limited by the number of turns that you have in the game. To True. Me. Trying to figure out stuff. Me, uh, Actually, for me, that's kinda. interesting. Wander doesn't have any forest birdies. Nope, I haven't <laughs> bothered. Very... I've got my Eastern Kingbird, and it's just going utterly to the waste with that. <laughs> oh, hey. That's oh, handy. Morning Dove. I like Morning Doves. I've just been tucking really good birds. <laughs> yeah, I think getting that duck out early wander would have been the correct choice, because then I would have been able to tuck not really good birds. I wouldn't have been so down to the wire on the ones I'd want to pick. Oh, is your hand just really empty? Because you have oh, to... Like, I've got a few cards, but because I keep tucking things, the cards that I'm left with tend to be, like, cards I really want to keep. <laughs> so I've, uh... I've, I've been able to keep tucking, but I'm not feeling good about the tucking I'm doing. <laughs> I don't want to go here and lay eggs. Maybe that's okay, though. Maybe that's just one of those, like, psychological biases. Oh, a Junko. Well, it's going to get eaten. I actually wonder, thanks to you not playing any birds in the forest, though, and instead just laying lots of eggs, I have, like, barely enough eggs that I don't need to, like, You don't need to get eggs. eggs. Yeah. Yeah. I really want that uh, that other bird that Shell had last time that lets you uh, proc a brown move twice. Um, oh, yeah. That, that was one of the cards I tucked earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there only I, one bird in the whole deck? Uh, there's only one of each type of raven, but there are two ravens. And oh, there are, I think, two or three types of cat birds and mockingbirds. So they're, they're all a little bit different. No no bird is like a, a duplicate of the other one, but some of them have duplicates of the same brown power. But they've always got like a different number of egg slots or points or food requirements. My egg generation is maxed out. <laughs> you managed to do it in the end? Oh, uh, no, you, I you haven't that... fully maxed it yet, but I'm generating four to five eggs per round. Like, that's that's Pretty some good. egg right there. I, I think in that first game, I had six eggs per round. Damn. How many? But there's, like, one that gives you two eggs but gives everyone else one. But it's really good because it's hard for the other players to plan around it because it has such a specific nest requirement, so. Yep. I, I had one game where I had one of those guys plus a cat bird, though, which Man. meant that I was able to put out nine eggs per round. If I can get the, uh, if I can get the bird that lets me, um, or that gives me spare eggs for anything that has, like, stick nest. 
this gets silly. I've only got those birds. Does that exist? I have no idea. I'm not Probably sure that bird not. exists. Probably weirdly. not. Huh. That tree swallow has an interesting ability. But you have to sacrifice a card. <laughs> uh, that another. one's really good, though. Tree sw that, that's the, the, the tuck card power. It's the reason it's so good is because it's a guaranteed point per activation. But generally, you want to build yourself so that you're always tucking cards that are your worst ones, and you're mm -hmm. gonna overall increase the quality of cards you can play that way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Wander, don't forget that you can get points from playing cards in the forest, though. <laughs> I, I'm not, not playing birds in the forest because... Uh, I, I'm mainly just not putting anything there because I don't have anything useful there. Yeah, yet. and that's totally fair. Hmm. But you do a lot better getting your wetland up so that you can draw lots of things and find something useful to put there. Let's see what I can do. Oh, that's cute. Ruby throated hummingbird and an indigo bunting. Was that another tuck bird, by the way? Which one? Th that you just picked up? I picked uh, up another one. I didn't. Bird. Shell got that one. Ah, uh, Shell did. Okay. I'm starting to tuck a lot of things. Saw. That sounds cute. Yeah, swallows like to be by water because they they do flit right above the surface and catch insects. I always like seeing them fly the most. Because it's as though you've never seen a more concerted, almost, what would you call it? It's kind of like when you have those heavily choreographed water dancing things. Synchronized swimming. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so it's like synchronized I was flight. Sure what you meant. Synchronized flight. All the swallows moving around together. It was funny when we went to the Portland Museum, or not Museum, Zoo, and they had their California condors out. That was a long ways back, though. I think they may have had a baby at one point. A lot of the animals there are having babies. Hmm. Oh. I just, the most peculiar animal that I wanted to see there was the, it was like a South American version of a porcupine. Oh. And we, we never actually got to see it in person because <laughs> it, it's, enclosure kept moving but they have this kind of uh, i don't know what you would refer to it as a a kind of bulbous pink nose it's just really cute looking i wish there was okay. a way that i could dump more cards from my hand but i guess i needed one of your dumb tuck birds uh yeah actually there's specific ones that are tuck cards to get eggs and those are, those are the best way to like get rid of cards. I guess there's also ones that are tuck cards to get food. Does that, does that mean you're just alchemizing birds into eggs? 
<laughs> well, yeah, I suppose you're just you're just turning them back in time on their age, right? Oh. This game has weird weird issues. <laughs> Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> too late. Okay, do I even need to... Nope. Uh, let's see, this costs two. That should be fine. I don't have any other eggs sitting around, do I? <laughs> eggs? Let's see. So, Wander, would you pin this game as being similar to Race for the Galaxy, or do you have some other kind game of. that you'd put as being more similar? No, it definitely it definitely springs from the same like general mentality. I would say Race of the Galaxy is more complicated, hmm. um, but this comes close. Okay. I think uh, the one thing Race for the Galaxy did was it allowed you to profit off of others' actions more. Um, yeah, the the interaction was a little bit higher, I'd say. Yeah, but this one, uh, unless I'm straight up skimming eggs off of somebody else's actions, uh, that's really just kind of where it caps out, and then the only real competition is whoever meets their goals uh, yeah. sooner. I think I think the end of round goals do fit within that. I think it, it fits a nice goal for that. Ah, didn't get enough eggs. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, actually, the one that I, I was watching, um, I guess recently it was a wholesome verse one where you were playing uh, that like witch hunt game. Yeah. And yeah, I was it. I was struck by how much it was just prop hunt from Gary's mod. It really was. <laughs> Because there was, like, another game I was watching recently, which was, um, oh, it was, like, the, you were hiding, and you were, like, pretending you were one of the robots, and people were trying to guess who you were, and, like, oh, it was that called one. Punched or something like that. I forget. Yeah. Um, but that one was very much, uh, like, one of my friends from college had had some friends who made a game jam, and made a game that was basically the precursor to that, I think, but... I, it made me really wonder now, like, I thought they were original in it. It was like, you know, like no, 10 years ago now, but maybe there's an even older one. Yeah, there's actually multiple games that kind of fit that general bill. Because uh, okay. like the punched game that you were talking about, there's another one that came out recently called Unspottable. Um, hey, Unspottable. That's actually the one that I meant. Okay. Sorry, that, so, that's actually what I was thinking of. But there are at least three to four more games. I think they're all based off of potentially Spy Party. Um, or maybe some other ones where you're really supposed to blend in, and if you if you don't, you get killed. Uh, but okay. I, I've I seen mean, like five or six different games come out with that specific idea, and I wouldn't be surprised if your friends didn't have a somewhat original idea with that one, but I bet there's a source game that everybody's pulling from that everyone has forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if there was games that would predate something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I'm going to check in with my friend to, to figure out on that one, because I, I, I was surprised by how much it was just the same concept again. But, you know, ultimately, I think it makes kind of, you know, to, to rehash some ideas kind of makes sense when, like, that idea wasn't really going anywhere otherwise anyways. So I wasn't begrudging that. Hmm. 
I have quite enough food to play out these birds. Oh, but this one's good. <laughs> How's this round feeling for both of you compared to last round? Much better. Uh, Much faster. I, I am really confused because nothing... I haven't been able to get, as you guys have said before, like the engines working mm. for anything. Yeah, that was the thing I was going to say about Racer of the Galaxy is that there were much more overt industry chains that you could set up and exploit. This one definitely feels like there are... Uh, I guess to exp uh, excuse the phrase... You get kind of pigeonholed into, like, one of maybe four different general builds that you really want to go for, and then everything else is just kind of making do. I think um, Race of the Galaxy also only had about five overarching strategies. There were different angles you could take. You know, yeah, I, 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 think I see it was a lot good. of... I, I've seen a lot of birds go by, like the Chirping Sparrow, or Chipping Sparrow, lay one egg on any bird. You know, I've seen a number of those. And there were a couple like that in Race for the Galaxy, but there were more that had, like, a weirder power that you really had to, like, factor in. But it's been yeah. so long since I've played Race for the Galaxy, it's a little hard for me to fully judge. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I like Race for the Galaxy, except for... I guess because it was so complicated, it took a long time to play, but maybe that would have been better if I was playing with other people. I mean, with a computer version of the game. Yeah. Whereas I think this game is almost a little bit slower playing with the computerized version because there's certain things that just have trouble happening simultaneously. But it's still a pretty quick game, like compared to, I guess, a lot of things once you once you get used to it. Hmm. I played a morning dove earlier, and mm. having that cuckoo out made that I almost never needed to use that morning dove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think mm. I think you're definitely right, Wander, about like the strategies. But I think the thing that's complex about it is I think I think I had the strategy of like having a grassland engine this game, but then I really failed to capitalize on that. And like, you know, <laughs> no matter how many hours of play, I just feel like I'm always aware that I made mistakes by the end. Like it, it's hard to look back at a game and feel like I played optimally and I suspect Race for the Galaxy has the same thing, but I think it was certainly less obvious to me where those mistakes had came into play, whereas this game, I I feel like I... I guess I'm, I'm understanding a lot better each time. Yeah. Maybe I, I just like should... the aesthetic so much, though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. This, this does have a more delightful aesthetic. I would say we should probably start intermingling um, some Terraforming Mars in here, just because sure. I feel like Terraforming Mars... Did a lot of what I liked about Race for the Galaxy, but mm, yeah, with some more options. Like it felt like the the logical upgrade, because I think one thing that okay. really ruined Ma Race for the Galaxy was the military tech. I, I felt like that was really awkward to work around. Oh, because in the first version, it did allow you to disrupt other players with that. Are you describing expansions where it did allow that, or do you mean uh, just yeah. like you never understood how to use it? Yeah, there were later expansions that that really did let you affect how other players worked, hmm. and that got okay. quite tiring. Uh, so there was like there were certain military techs that would yeah just let you blast other people, um, and that was I think that was exhausting to experience to some degree. Okay. Yeah, because it, it almost felt like they deliberately had avoided that in the first version of the game. So 
it was a little bit counterintuitive about military, but it made a lot of sense from a game design. I think there's there's been a good shift in the realization that it kind of sucks to like play a game where over the course of the game as you lose, you have fewer and fewer options to make. Whereas in Wingspan, I would say that losing, you never feel like you have limited options if you're like behind. And often you have even more options because you just haven't maxed out your bird spaces yet or things like that. Whereas like the best games of Wingspan that you perform generally like the person who's in lead has like the fewest places left to play birds or kind of fewish like optimal play strategies. But I guess it's it's also not a game that's easy to play from behind, because if you get behind, you can't necessarily win any of the end of round goals either. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess it feels well designed mostly just because you're mostly going for your own kind of personal best instead of like feeling like you're getting stomped on. <laughs> Oh, cowbirds are like cuckoos. That's interesting. One thing I don't like about this is I feel like there's actually too few turns to do all the stuff that I'd like to do. Well, but that's, that's the hard decisions you have to make, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose it is. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I think it's funny how that doesn't feel good, though, right? I don't know yeah. how you could fix it, though. I, I think it's, if it gave you more time, it would be easy to play all 15 birds. And mm -hmm. I think that trade-off that you can't play all 15 birds unless you really work towards it means that you're always thinking about, should I play a bird? I think I've done all I can. Holy crap, you got a lot of those. We're on the last turn. This a lot of what? Uh, a lot of I, birds? <laughs> well, birds with the uh, the hole in the tree. Oh, I, yeah. That I, I've actively been kind of attempting to try and go for some of these. I, the, you got one of them. <laughs> yeah. I think the raven strategy works, uh, but I think it works a lot better when you have Shell's bonus card. Uh... Um, I'd you say can the do raven. Two of them. The raven definitely just like outweighs the bonus cards. Well, no, 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 no. Uh, the raven, but the raven with the bird that doubles its effects. Oh, Having well, that yeah, would have really course. helped on this one. Having Though, two I ravens think... is definitely way better than one. <laughs> yeah. Ain't no doubt about that. Yeah, you see, other people have. Looks like you guys have maxed out your hole in the tree ones. I I just didn't have enough turns to get all the eggs I wanted on mine. Unless we have one more turn? Nah, nope. I think this is the last That's turn, it. isn't it? Yep. Ugh. Lay. Oh, but it has to be a that nest. That's I also terrible. keep getting really unlucky with my bonus card abilities. My oh, bonus card ability well was game. for so, that type of tree, but I never found enough uh, birds with the hole in the tree to so actually get it. Mine was birds. My starting one, at least, was birds with at least four eggs laid on them. And Oh, that one sucks. I've never felt good about it having taken that one. <laughs> yeah, because I'm looking at mine. None of my birds are even functionally capable of holding that many eggs. Yeah, it's it's such a weird one. It, it feels possibly good, but then you start doing it and you realize it's like really wow. hard to get even like two or three points I just points absolutely did terrible this round because I had no strategy. I just got a lot of random cards. I thought I was doing decent, but we got stomps. I... Those, the, the tucked I was cards in the not end of as round as casually goals. as I thought I might. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. I did better than last time, but I think I'd still like to 
to give terraforming Mars more of a shot because I just yeah, sure. I feel like there's more you can do. Um, yeah, I mean, I think terraforming Mars in this game, I feel similarly about not being sure what the optimal strategy is. And I think what's fascinating to me is it seems like such a simple game, right? But then yeah. I'm still like learning the game a lot more each time I play it. And that just like hasn't changed the more I've played. Okay. Well, I yeah. think we've Going come to, to the end other of stuff. our time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go play some, some uh, Monster Sanctuary, but I am going to send a uh, key for Terraform Mars to both oh. of you. <laughs> All right. So we'll do that next time. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe we can check out Root, Root later. Uh, maybe some other okay. ones. Because I, I wouldn't mind turning Friday night into kind of a de facto board game night. Uh, yeah, sure. In that case, that. I might also start inviting some friends on uh, just sure. to fill out. Because oh, I know good. one or two of them have mentioned that they actually wanted to play Wingspan. Um, well, let's let's do it again sometime and play it wrong. I have so oh. many ideas uh. of how to play Wingspan wrong. I mean, just hiding, hiding their effects would be interesting. I, that would be fun, although the people who played it most would benefit from it, which is not usually the way you want. <laughs> change this a game. is true. Um, the one I want to do is I think a number of the achievements for this game are pretty cute. And I'd want to see a game where it's required that you have to get like certain like requirements of the achievements. Um, hmm. Like, for example, you must play 15 birds in order to be considered like victorious. Because um, I feel like that really changes what the game's like. But you, the other one I want to do. You definitely be is, panicking a bit more. I, it's true. I want to play. I want to play one that's also fully cooperative where all players are working together because I don't think the strategy on that is as obvious as it might expect. Like, for example, you can't no. tie any of the goals. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure how many games of each of those, but I think some of those types of things would be fun. Unless it's it doesn't one of have those to be things next where you're just, just you know. trying to cumulatively add up everyone's contributions to see what you're best score for the entire group would be i don't know yeah I think, oh yeah I think that would make sense score. that cooperatively wouldn't be about uh it would be more about getting the maximum sum total score divided by the number of players yeah uh so you're not competing for the end of round goals uh you're you're trying to make sure people maybe don't tie to maximize points there yeah because um, it rounds it would be down more, on ties yeah because then then you'd be more trying to compete for future cooperative runs that mm -hmm. makes sense i think it could be fun i haven't convinced my friends to do it yet so i i think we should give that a shot sometime just yeah various uh, I, I, weird challenges for this game fun videos too uh five is the max five yeah so okay. I'll, I'll suggest that when we do uh when we do wingspan again um yeah and i'll see if i can grab maybe some more people for that sure I, yeah. I will say because it scales linearly with number of players, it's it's definitely better with three than True. other numbers. Um, but five's still fine, you know, just like if everyone knows it well, then it'll go fast. So that won't be as big of an issue.